Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. And in um, the program that I go to, you know, we talk about hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And as you know, I add the double S's for stressed and sick. And those are what people sometimes justify their overeating for. I was so hungry. Living in the extremes. Do you live in the extremes? You're overtired, you slept too much, you've got the runs, you've been constipated for a week, you're overly hungry, or you're, or you're overly full, right? And some of us with our food journeys, we've been, um, we've experienced a lot of that. We starved ourselves until we just binged ourselves out to get disgusted and starve ourselves again. There's no gray. It's black, it's white. Overly hungry, overly full. I'm going to a party tonight, so I'm not going to eat anything all day long. Stupid thinking. Stupid eating habit. I'm going to a wedding in the afternoon, so I'm not going to have anything for breakfast, and then I'm going to have one cocktail and be on my, be on my keister, and then with the alcohol freeing me because I don't stop at one, and then I overeat through the whole wedding. All those stand-up things and the nice little people come along with the little trays of the hot hors d'oeuvres and I keep taking them and yakking. In one hand is a toothpick and the other hand is my drink. And then the waiter goes by with another white wine or another champagne and I grab that and I just have a little piggy event. And then I'm overly full. And that cute little sleek dress that I work so hard to fit into, I've got the gut going. I've got the <clears throat> drank too much, ate too much thing going. My stomach is telling me you shouldn't ought to done it. Right? And so we need to be aware of the extremes that we choose to keep living after we've made some differences in our life. You know, in AA, they say if you quit drinking, your disease progresses even without you adding the alcohol. And so if you were to start drinking after 10, 15 years, your body, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to that place a lot faster because for some reason, some metabolic, physiologic, I don't know, psych psychologic, whatever the reason is, spiritual, karmic, who knows, is that you, you start acting like you'd been drinking all along. And that's how your body that's how your body becomes. It's like there was no, no 10 or 15 years without the drink. You can do that with food too. A lot of people show that all the time. And so if you've been eating healthy and taking care of yourself and paying wicked, wicked, wicked attention to what you're doing, you're living in the gray because you're not letting yourself get too hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed, or sick. Those six little horseless, no, headless horsemen that could come trampling in and wreck your party. And your party might be your body. Your party might be the party because you, you make an arse out of yourself by overdoing it. You end up trying to stick your finger down the throat in the, ba in the bathroom. Or maybe you don't even have to stick your finger down the throat. You're in the bathroom losing things, right? It's not pretty. It's not fun. So some of us come from a background of extremes with our food. We just know nothing in the middle, except for maybe temporary little times that we go when we pay somebody money to teach us how to feed ourselves, like, like a Jenny Craig, like a Nutrisystems, like, I don't know, Medifast, maybe even a few um, at-bats with Weight Watchers. And while we're good, we're very, very good. And then as soon as we lose our momentum, it gets pretty dangerous out there. The extremes can happen. Overly hungry, overly full. Where's your middle? If you're in the middle, that means you're working it, sister. And that's where I want to see you. Taking the time to track. Yep, yeah, that doesn't go away. Even lifetime members still do it. Sorry. It means taking the time to um, pay attention to how certain foods respond and react in your body. It's taking the time to pay attention to what you're buying. It's weighing and measuring as well as tracking. 
No eyeballing, because eyeballing could get you five pounds in a month. Or, as I've seen recently on videos, not weighing and measuring can get you 10 pounds in less than a week. You gotta work hard at it. <laughs> Just like we have to work hard at keeping it off. And we do that by having a toolkit. A plumber does not show up at a job with no tools. A weight watching person does not show up for life with no tools in their packet, in their satchel, in their ditty bag, in their, in their smartphone, right? So you have tools. Think of the tools that we have today that you didn't have 10, 15, 20 years ago when you might have had your first round with this. No, we didn't have these tools. We are so lucky to have these tools. And so we don't want to abuse what we've got, what we've been given, what we sometimes pay for. So what makes you think that you can stop doing what helps you lose the weight? What helps you maintain the weight? What are you thinking? Are you thinking you're cured because you've lost the weight? Chances are, if you think you have a weight problem, you don't have a weight problem. You have a head problem. That's what gets us into trouble. It's our head. I'm not overweight, or I wasn't overweight, because I ate too much. I was overweight because of what goes on in here, either giving me license to overeat or giving me zoning out, like, like almost like a chemical zone out. So I would eat as if somebody gave me permission. I don't have that. That's my head problem. That's my food addiction. The weight is just a sidebar, is an ancillary thing. It's just a consequence. It's still going to go on in here. Because I may have lost the weight. I may be in maintenance now. But I still got my head problem. I still think of those things. I still wonder why I can't have that. When I see somebody doing something with some sort of grain, oh yeah, baby, why can't I? Wah, wah. Well, I can't, and I prefer not to. And if I was brought right to the brink, like right to the brink with the drink, right to the brink with that piece of ciabatta bread toasted with some butter on it, I'm gonna say no thank you. Why? Because my will, my my desire, I should say, not my will, my desire to stay where I am and not lose control is stronger than that one thing eaten in less than a minute and a half, and I know the setup that follows. It tells my brain, it lights up my brain, it gets my brain going with, woohoo, look at that, woo, that goodie is back, I want more. I'm fat adapted. I worked hard at becoming fat adapted. I do not want to go back to being glucose adapted. It was a journey. It was probably six months before my journey was complete because I spent 60 years, 60 years with my head in a vat of garbage. I might have eaten less of other things so I could still have it. I did when I was on Weight Watchers because I still allowed all the grains. And that stopped working for me. It stopped working for my age, my digestive tract, and my peace of mind. And so I have to be very careful now in maintenance of being extremely hungry or getting extremely full. I know a, sa a satiating meal, if it was the same weight, but it was carbs, I mean, grain carbs, sugar carbs, I would be in agony at the end of the meal. But when I have a heavy carbed, meaning lots of vegetables, dinner, I am comfortably full. I am not saying I shouldn't have eaten that. I am not thinking that I need to drink some Pepto-Bismol. I am not thinking I need Tums. It's vegetables. I'm comfortably full. I add the Kerrygold butter, because it makes the digestion and the um, nutrition get pulled out of the vegetables. There's just something in one of those nutrients inside the butter. 
And so be very, very careful of your extremes. Extremely hungry, extremely full. Try to find that balance in the middle where your brain is engaged. You are present for what you're eating. You're paying attention to what you're eating. You are not having the first three bites and then going to another place and then waking up in three days with 10 more pounds and saying, I don't know how it happened. It's almost like if you, if you put a camera on yourself. You know, when people do nighttime eating, they have to set up cameras because they can't believe what they get up and eat in their sleep that they have no recall of whatsoever. You can do that during the daylight hours with your eyes wide open. We're very good at food comas. We're very good at zoning out. That's the deal. That's why we're here. That's why we listen to Sarah Smackdowns. So be careful of the extremes in your life. Look for that nice middle of the road. Gray is a good color. That nice content feeling of satiated, not overly hungry and not overly full. Thanks for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Bye-bye for now.